Hi guys, this is a very short video about uh, something what I can call like HTTP loader. Uh, and what I want to tell you is uh, basically I was searching a uh, Twitter and I found quite an interesting uh, tweet about Ramco thread, nothing special, but what is quite interesting here, something really cool I have seen in the sample is that the .NET loader has the password in zip archive object properties. And when you see the code, you can actually see that they are basically downloading something to probably some file on the disk. Uh, or some stream, but I think it's this, it's a, it's a file path, but what I do, they actually uh, create a zip archive object uh, and uh, later on they basically extract all from the zip archive object to some disk location, so everything goes to the disk. Uh, it's not necessary, it's quite a, it's quite beginner bug or beginner, I don't know how can I say it, but okay. I just committed, yeah, they are a really nice little feature and later on they fuck everything with throwing or write to the disk. Uh, anybody can just write this comment, but give me some proof. Okay, so I will just try to show you some a uh, little bit better or neat way how to do it. Because the archive object property actually can, uh, the archive object, not property, the object itself, can be created from the stream and you can actually create like web communication uh, where you get the stream, the response stream, and you can pass the response stream to the zip archive object, which is actually quite nice because you, are, you will be creating the zip archive right in the memory or uh, the object, and you will later can get the files from the zip archive object right in the memory, and you can load whatever you want, you can process whatever you want right from the memory. You don't have to uh, throw anything to the disk. And this is like from the red teaming point of view, it's a very, very big difference between uh, this code and what I will show you. So, right to my VM and I hope I will show you something that is quite interesting, at least from the developer point. Uh, so, what I created, I created two example files, you can see that here. These are just uh, printing hello world or showing message box hello world. You can see it here, like first one is here, it's basically just console write line count, okay? And the second one is just showing message box pound, okay? That's all. Uh, both of them uh, has like na one namespace hello world, one class program and one method main. Yep, you can see it here too. Nice. So what I created is basically the something what I think is a really, really better way how you can, from the red teaming point of view, uh, work with the zip archive object. So here is the little snippet that you can see that it's basically uh, creating web request object, and you can see that you are creating from the some URL uh, from the as I as I show you these two files I created zip archive here and it contains the two exe files the assemblies this one it's two so uh we can actually uh, run our web server it's very trivial so we will run it like this on localhost and we can check that it's reachable yeah it's reachable and here is this okay Nice, we can jump back to the code snippet and what I want to tell you that we are creating the web request uh, with this URL and uh, method will be get. And what we are doing next is basically that we are getting the response and from the response we, con we, we will retrieve the response stream. And this is basically stream, stream and zip archive. The first object could be stream. So you can actually pass the, uh, something like web stream to the zip archive object and create the zip archive object. Nice. So after that, you will basically the zip archive ha could have many entries, but this one actually has only two entries. So you will basically pass uh, there are here are the properties entries, two entries, and you will uh, iterate through uh, all entries. And for every entry, we what we are doing, we just receive the a length, which is like. Um, decompress length, we will create a buffer for that and we actually read the stream to the buffer and decompress, like deflate it and load it 
as an assembly because it's an assembly i know that i as a developer know that the content uh, are two assemblies and these two assemblies has the same types and the same methods so we can actually get type hello world program and this type will get method main uh be careful because the main is uh, an internal and static public so you can just have to specify the binding pipes like no public and static and you have the method main and you can invoke that so everything from this will happen in the memory nothing is from on the disk nothing is saved to the disk so this is how 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 you should do it so yeah so we are processing like the most tricky or quite neat way uh, not neat thing here is basically that we are creating a zip archive object right from the web request response stream that's all that's all the idea that's all uh what is what this video is about so uh let's build it okay and it should be somewhere like HTTP lower. save some on the disk and we have it here yep if you check that in the dnspy the one compiled the source code is very very similar Yep, you can see the same web request method get a zip archive. Yeah, you can create a zip archive from the response stream and uh, open it, read it, load as, as an assembly, find the type, find the method, invoke method. That's all. And now a little proof of concept, just write it. Yep, if you run this one, it will just print you pound and read the, for the console. Yeah, for the input and here basically just based message box and what what do you what happens if you just try to uh this one you can see that it already loaded the first one and it's waiting for the input so enter and here is the second one nice and nothing was uh saved to the disk everything was like hey i download a, a zip file as a stream and this stream i like put as an argument to the zip archive object and i work with this in like only in memory that's all that's all what i wanted to tell you i show you i hope it's quite a useful or tricky maybe some kind of help for the developers but this is the way how you can do it and nobody cares what was in the zip file it doesn't have to be an assembly uh, they don't they didn't want to load it but there will be something probably what they want to work with so maybe it's a text files whatever but uh whatever it was they could actually work with it right in the memory and that's uh, like <laughs> like literally 100 uh, i'm like 100 sure it's a far far better solution because the av is there av is waiting for everything what you throw on the disk especially on the disk so whatever you want whatever whatever you whatever you can uh just work with everything right in the memory nothing saved on the disk and that's all thank you for watching and see you next time